Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It is good to be with you as we continue our look at the book of 1 Samuel, uh, walking through some of the the really significant moments in the history of the nation of Israel. And this is one of them. This uh, actually marks a, a kind of a turning point for the rest of the book as there's a new kind of era that uh, this establishes. But before we get to what's going on here, I've got a question for you. Do you ever crave something that you know isn't good for you? Of course you do. Uh, the hope is that that craving is either contained or you don't indulge too much. And maybe it's a candy bar or that pizza or that other junk food you like. Maybe it's something a little more destructive. Maybe it's a drink or some other substance that you know you shouldn't be consuming. Maybe it's an old toxic relationship that you know is not going to lead anywhere good. We all are human and crave things that we know aren't good for us. And that's what's happening here in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 8 is where we're at today as the people of God are craving something that they know isn't good for them. So I want to read uh, the first few verses of this and see what's going on here. It says this, Now when Samuel became old, he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn son was Joel, and the name of his second Abijah, and they were judges in Beersheba. Yet his sons did not walk in, in his ways and turned aside after gain. They took bribes and perverted justice. Not very good judges if they take bribes and pervert justice. Things are not going well. We saw uh, several months ago as we were going through the book of Judges, just, just the downward decline of, of these, the, the overall uh, system of, of human government over the people of Israel. And they really weren't pursuing after God. And it's gotten to yet another low here. So this is their solution, though. It says, Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah and said, Behold, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways, obviously. He says, Now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. This is different. They realize that the judges over them, that same, the, the, the sons of Samuel here are not leading the way they should be. And yet they're plan is to go a completely different direction. It says, the thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. And the Lord said to Samuel, obey the voice of the people and all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they've rejected me from being king over them. According to the deeds they've done from the day I brought them out of Egypt, even to this day, forsaking me and serving other gods, so are they doing to you. Now then obey your voice, only you shall solemnly warn them and show them the ways of the king who will rule over them. Now, on the surface, it seems reasonable and rational to us on this side of history. You go, oh, they want a king. Give them a king. Except as we see, as we continue reading here, they had a king already. God was their king. God was their leader. God just used judges and prophets to, to guide and direct them in his ways. But there was a previous understanding that God was their king. They did not need a human king except they, dis- they, they chose to desire what other nations had. Do you hear what he said? The, the people brought to him and said, now appoint for us a king to judge us like all the nations. We want to be like the other people. We want to be like everyone else. So Samuel goes and warns him and says, guys, you don't want this. Here's what's going to happen. He's going to take your stuff. He's going to take your people. It's going to be hard for you. Kings aren't good. God is much better. You guys don't want this. And here's what they said. But the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. They said, no, there shall be a king over us and that we may be like all the nations and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And when Samuel had heard all the words of these people who repeated them to the ears of the Lord, and the Lord said to Samuel, obey their voice and make them a king. So Samuel then said to the men of Israel, go every man to his city. See, I find it so interesting, just as a side note, that one of the reasons they had for wanting a king is is they want a king to go out before us and fight our battles. Who else to do this better than to God himself, who went before them and fought all of their battles? Think about the the historical amnesia they were operating with, the spiritual amnesia of all the things God had done, all the ways that God had gone before them. But for us, as we read this, I hope this makes you wonder, where are you pushing back against the wisdom of God in your life? 
Where are you going? God, I know that you're supposed to be my leader and you're supposed to be the one ruling and guiding me in my life, but I want to do my own thing. Where in your life are you maybe acting like the Israelites in this point of their history saying, we just want to be like everybody else? Until you remember that everyone else is not influenced by the God of the universe, but is influenced by sin and destruction and sometimes even Satan himself. It can be so tempting to be like all the other nations and be like everyone else, but God doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want that for us. He wants us to follow him and serve him. And so are you seeking to live in his wisdom and direction for your life, or are you trying to do your own thing? Because unfortunately, this marks a new kind of chapter in the storyline of Israel and not for the better. Samuel's warning to the people was very appropriate that things would get worse. Things would get harder for them because they chose to reject God's leadership in their life and instead choose to be like all the other nations and it never ends well for us. So today my prayer for you is that you would submit to God's leadership in your life and that you wouldn't try and be like all the other people, all the other nations, but instead you would try to be like the one savior who came to give his life for you and set an example for you in every way that you would say, I want to be more like Jesus. I hope that you can do that today. We'll see you next time.